treatment's over. So if I were behind, I wouldn't even be looking in the bottom box here. We're just simply stripping off the strength on the top. So we'd, here's another super seeker cell. Look at that. It's very important. Very important these colonies look after uh, replacing the queen on their own terms. Nothing more satisfying than a hive that'll look after itself. We want these colonies to be roughly four frames of brood down below. That's the strength we're looking for. It looks like this colony basically is. And I count my frames capped brood, always capped brood. There we go, that's four. So if there's only a partial frame of capped brood, I'm only count down as partial. So we'll count them all together, that's four frames. So these colonies have organized themselves accordingly. Nice little super seeder cell there. They're going to look after themselves. It's extremely exciting. And we're going to sort through this top box now. So this is the split. They've just started working out on the foundation here. So they're putting extra energy there. That's really encouraging to see. frame of food. Ooh, big frame of larvae. Lots of youth up top. So I've, uh, I've split off this colony. And I'm seeing a lot of open brood up top. The bottom box is four frames of brood down below, so the bottom is set up nicely. The top box, she's laid me out a perfect little split here, but it's not quite mature enough yet. It's all, all open brood. So I went through the rest of the line here, just spot checking a few colonies, and primarily that's the stage this yard's at. She's just expanding into the top. She's just laying out that split for me. So I'm jumping the gun just a little bit. When I make my splits, when I take away my colonies, I'm counting capped brood. Okay, that's capped brood. You measure your strength of your colony, cap brood, because it's predictable. It helps you predict what's going to be in those colonies next time you come in. So if I take this split away, what's going to happen is this colony will go instantly queenless. They'll go into a panic state and by doing that they just, what they'll do is they'll cannibalize a lot of this open brood. All this energy that's been put into establishing that brood nest, they're going to strip the younger brood that's been established. Because there's a lot of energy that's involved in rearing brood and developing that brood into maturity. So when they go into panic state, they will just strip all that workload at the bottom half and they'll focus primarily on getting another queen going. They'll draw emergency cells, they'll strip all that young brood, they'll cannibalize it, and they'll only invest into that brood which they can feel they can handle themselves uh, within you know, dire circumstances. I, so I'm not gaining anything. She's laid me out a perfect little split here, and I, and I take it off as a split. I'm not gaining anything. They're just gonna remove a lot of that workload has already been put into establishing this this uh, the top box here for me that I want to take away for a split. So what I what I have to do is I just got to be a little bit patient here. I'm going to move to a different yard does me, I could, that I will anticipate is a little more advanced than this yard. I'm going to give these guys, you know, a few more days. I'll give them, you know, four or five days even. I'll come back. This top box will be fully capped and it'll be ready for me to take it as a split. This bottom box will be chugging along just as no normal. I'll be able to come through, shake these bees out of the top box and take away as a split and 
pull away a predictable uh, nest. So it's really important that I recognize what I want to have done here as I split these colonies. I got to make sure that simply by going through and managing these colonies that I'm not impeding their growth or development. I want to hang on. I want to harness every little bit of momentum these colonies have going for me right now. And I don't want to stagger them. So by taking this split a little bit too early, I'm going to stagger the development and the potential from this, from the energy put into this little unit here. So I'm just going to put them back together and we'll go to another yard and see that I anticipate it's a little more advanced. So we just pulled into another yard that's maybe a little more advanced than that last yard we were in. And what I'm finding is the bottom box here is roughly, you know, the good old four frames of brood. And the top box, we're counting to see how much strength we're able to take away. And for the most part, we're finding the top box has been nicely, you know, capped over. She's provided a nice nest for us up top. So basically we're just going through and counting the frames of brood in this top box. Boy, these guys, they've already started working out in the foundation, storing away nectar. We finished feeding, like these pails are on, but they've been empty for, for a week. This is fresh nectar coming in. Storing away the honey. This is a good feed frame for the colony. Feed on this side and we start into the brood nest. And I'm just quickly scanning for the queen. I'm not spending a lot of attention trying to find her. There's two food frames. And a nice frame of brood. So this this brood is capped over. So that's going to be excellent to send off into this split. Here's one good frame of brood. Pulling into another beautiful frame of brood. I'm not seeing too much open larvae up here, so she's established this nest up top and they've they started filling up with nectar. So they've almost as if they're pushing her back down. So as these frames down here hatch, she'll be naturally moving down there to, uh, to fill those up. Third frame of brood. There she is. Beautiful little queen. Because a founder, I'm going to treat her with the dignity that she deserves. So now I know she's down in that bottom mm -hmm. box. So, you know, there's about two, two and a half frames of brood in this split we're about to take away. I don't have to shake any more bees off because I know the queen's down there. Here's another frame of brood. So this is going to make a nice little split.
Right now, I'm just assuming there's four frames of brood down here, but uh, through the colonies we've been working through so far, generally there's three to four frames of brood down below. So for the so for the sake of time, if they're a little bit stronger, we'll be coming through with another equalization round after, once we get these seconds back on. After we take the split, after we get these seconds back on, we'll be coming through for another equalization round to be able to catch the ones that we maybe left a little bit strong, if they're a little bit weak. That same round, we're gonna be boosting them up a little bit during that same equalization round. But for the sake of what we're trying to do right now, is we're taking away all the surplus strength. So this queen has provided us a very nice little split up top. She's done all the work. She's back down the bottom. Queen excluders in. The bees are going to come up, cover it off, and we just simply strip this off. And this will develop into a, just a beautiful little colony. So I just got back from the bee yard, and it looks like Carrie's finished her grafting for the day already. And I can tell because she's filled out the card. She's grafted on the 25th. So tomorrow we have these two uh, graft frames to move into the incubator. Moves into the incubator in the 26th here. And from the 28th. The graft frame would be going into this hive, and then the day after that, the graft frames, these ones would be going into the incubator, and then she'll be grafting into these builders, and then we're going to start back at the first two, and we just keep progressing through the line all the way through, and we just keep shifting the frames from slot A to slot B on every, every uh, stage over. So everything works in this cycle. Everything's timed day after day after day. So it's just a process that happens. So this morning, the graft frames in slot B would have been, would have been transferred to the incubator. The frame in slot A would have been brought into slot B. And then the new frames dropped, new graft frames dropped into slot A. So the graft frame just goes from slot A to slot B into the incubator. And we just do that all the way down the line. Works really slick. It's easy to keep things in on track and predictable. It's easy to visualize this kind of stuff. We have the uh, incubator set at 93 degrees and should be around 60% humidity. Two days of sales in here now and the first set should be ready tomorrow if we don't have any nukes ready yet peek. these are transferred tomorrow That's good. This thing's working just perfectly like it did last year. Should be able to cycle the cells through and I gotta get some nukes ready. <laughs> 